What's good YouTube, it's Jay here and today I wanted to give you a quick kind of mini guide on how to get your empires going in Star Wars Empire War Remake. Empire War Remake recently just released its 4.0 update to the public and uh, it's being met with a lot of mixed results. A lot of people really love the complications of it, a lot of people are really confused. Overall lost by how difficult the mod is compared to pretty much any other Empire War mod on the market. There are a lot of difficult mods on the Empire War market like Phoenix Rising, Awakening of the Rebellion, and a few other projects. Um, but for the most part, most Empire War mods have always followed a very similar formula. They're all consistent of very easy going gameplay uh, with little real strategic value in most of your combat scenarios and your Empire development. As a matter of fact, most mods already have every, every one of their factions kind of established. You have a bit of an idea of where to go. And uh, overall, there really isn't too much depth to a lot of Empire War mods. Remake's goal was basically to change that and turn it into more of a Stellaris kind of game. If you don't know what Stellaris is, it's a massive Civ... Uh, I don't want to say four times RTX, whatever. RTX, RTS. Um, <laughs> it, it's basically like one of those Civ simulator kind of games where you have an entire galaxy under your control. You have to build an empire from the ground up, basically. That's kind of what Remake strives for. Um, the gameplay could be a little bit punishing if you don't know what you're doing. Um, it can be very difficult and very tough to get things going if you're very just unfamiliar with the formula. Uh, so with this video, I'm just going to show off a couple of things to kind of help you get started with building your empire appropriately. Now, I recently made a video kind of explaining how to get your economy going. The economy is super important in Empire War Remake. It's more important than you'll probably ever see in any other mod aside from, say, maybe Awakening the Rebellion, which follows a very similar system in terms of economic production and building and whatnot. Uh, but the way this mod approaches it makes things a little bit more complicated for a lot of people. Now, I won't go all over the economics because I already made a video about that. I'll leave it uh, link for it in the description below. Um, but... There are a lot of things you kind of got to really get a grasp of when you first start your remake run. So I picked the Empire as an example for this because the Empire is theoretically the hardest faction to play. And a lot of people love the Empire, so they're struggling with the Empire right now. And it's really uh, throwing a lot of people off. Some people are getting discouraged, and I don't really want that to happen. There's a lot of good with the Empire. It just takes a little bit of practice. So one of the first things you're going to really want to do when you start off with your imperial run is check what kind of planet types that you have the empire has a lot of urban high population planets so they can afford to really put all these like taxation agency buildings and stuff on their worlds which generate the most income when they're put on uh, urban climate planets and then we also have temperate climate planets as well you could throw mining facilities on those even uh, they don't generate as nearly as much income as like your asteroid planets, your barren planets, whatever you want to call it, uh, would, but I mean, it gives you some options. Uh, your taxation agencies also only give you 150 credits, unfortunately, on these types of planets as well, but I mean, you still have more good planets than you do bad planets. The Coruscant system is gonna be your highest money-making planet in the core, pretty much. Uh, you get a lot of stuff here. Uh, you also have the ability to build commercial trading hubs on this planet right out the, go uh, right out the gate. Uh, so focus on that the first mistake a lot of people make when they play this mod as the empire is they immediately jump to building their capital ships they go right into building their victory cruisers and they're immediately baffled as to why they're a lacking money and b why their weekly income is decreasing ever so steadily you have to remember these capital ships these big vessels they have a maintenance cost you have to pay this maintenance cost weekly and uh, at first it can be a little jarring but once you kind of get used to everything, you figure out exactly why that system exists, and uh, it's a little easier to understand over time. The system basically exists to prevent people from just only capital ships spamming. Theoretically, you could do that later in the game, but our early game, no. Okay, the, the whole goal of this is to make a very balanced experience against all factions. You're not just God. You don't just have access to everything right off the rip. There's no fun in that in most cases, and it makes it way too easy. Empire War Remake isn't trying to be a simple stomp simulator, too easy simulator. It might get like that later in the game, but that's only after you really establish yourself. And even then, it's still not exactly easy. There's still some challenge to it. So one of the first few things you should really focus on when you're building your early Imperial fleets is the Skip Ray Blast Boat. It's the best early game bomber in the game. It's really damn powerful and it can hold its own. It has a lot, it has a decent amount of health, so it doesn't get gunned down super easily. Uh, literally build around this I, I kid you not most of the minor factions around here really can't counter this bomber appropriately their ships are just not strong enough 
So, I'll give you a bit of an example. Uh, in some recent gameplay that I was doing, I was prepping for another video. I got attacked by the Hape and the, by the Hapes Consortium at, uh... So, in, a, in another, on another Galactic Conquest scenario, I got attacked by the Hapes, Hapes Consortium on a planet that was around here. I can't remember what the name of the planet is. They had eight battle dragons, four Nova Cruisers, some fighters, and Prince Isolder. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I was able to destroy that fleet at the cost of the level one colony I had, unfortunately, but I was able to destroy that fleet with basically all the skip rays that I had. Skip rays also do come with some form of anti-starfighter in the terms of missiles and stuff that can actually target starfighters, at least from my experience, and they make short work of things like Hapen Battle Dragons. So if you're dealing like with the Hapes like I was, so if you're in a scenario where you're dealing with large Hapen fleets, for example, like I was, uh, the skip rays will absolutely eat those ships alive. Same goes against the Republic Loyalists or the Hardliners. They, they, they don't fare well against skip ray blast builds. Most units don't fare well against this unit. Escorted appropriately with your Tartan patrol gunships or your Vigil Corvettes and whatever starfighters you have on the field, and you'll see a lot of success. You have to really micromanage it and play appropriately, though. Don't just throw your bombers at a fleet and expect them to all survive and just make it out completely. You know, you gotta draw some fire away. Use your station as a bait, even, if you have to. The goal is to win the battle, not necessarily keep the colony alive. If you truly cannot keep the colony alive, you just have to accept that. That's just how it is. That's just how it's gonna be sometimes. You wanna bait your enemy out so your bombers can actually appropriately get through and uh, do what they're supposed to do. Now, I highly recommend focusing heavily on gladiator formations. This ship is very good early game. It has a repair ability, it has long range weapons, and it has TIE Fighters and Skip Rays. This is easily the best early game ship in the game because, I mean, you build this in large numbers, you get a crap ton of TIE Fighters, you get a crap ton of bombers, and it only has a population cost of nine with no maintenance cost. Now, there is the upkeep cost of the Starfighters. If you lose TIE Fighters, for example, I believe, according to this listing right here, an entire TIE Fighter squadron is about 240 credits. Um, but I mean, to, you'll, make those, you'll make that money back over time. The cost system for Starfighters has proven to be a little difficult for a lot of people, but it all just comes down really to smart play. You're just gonna end up losing those credits sometimes. That's just the way it is. If this were a real military, those ships would have to replace those Starfighters somehow. That's just how the system is supposed to work. It gives you no freebies, but at the same time, you still get a lot of good out of these ships. They're not all just... <laughs> they're not all just insanely expensive things. Like, you get a lot of value out of these ships. But the Gladiator can repair the units, has long-range weapons, fighters, you name it, and it's very, very cost-effective for the population that it gets. Then another thing you want to focus also on is your Vindicator cruisers. These cruisers have ion cannons and other lasers, and they have long-range weapons as well. They're overall a very round, well-rounded ship to go with your Gladiator formations. You don't want to focus on your victories and your Vindicators until late tech level one, like once you've really got your economy kind of going like how I have. And then I'll show you guys an example of what my galaxy kind of looks like. Uh, after I get through explaining a few things here and there. So, with experience, you'll kind of get an idea of how things kind of feel or how they're supposed to go. It all makes sense over time. Um, but don't focus so hard on the heavy ships right at the gate because it just won't get you anywhere. You're going to lose your money really quickly. The entire goal of the mod is to get you to establish an actual empire in a sense. Uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to build things up. You're gonna have to take your time. You're gonna have to practice. It's gonna you're probably gonna lose a couple of games here and there because the system is so different. But that's okay. Don't hold so much value to your ships, and don't be so discouraged if you lose a few battles. That's the whole point of warfare. You're not supposed to win every battle. That would be, well, illogical, I guess. And it also makes for extremely boring gameplay. So many mods exist where you can just win every battle with no losses, no repercussion. That's not the goal of this project. The goal of this project is to teach you how to be careful and how to, you know, play things with patience. So that's pretty much it for the early fleet designs, focusing on your gladiators, vindicators, and all your smaller vessels. These vessels will net you a lot of value off the rip. I don't really have too much to say about the Arc 170. I personally have not used it a ton. Secondly, as the Empire, you spawn right next to Brentall, which is a free planet. You can just capture it right out the gate. Ignoring the pop-ups that are about to come up. You can pop it right out the gate. Now, the Empire's biggest struggle is usually the Republic Loyalists, because they usually, they have a pretty decently sized fleet, which consists of a Secular and a few Venators here and there. Um, so, 
While Venators are very powerful vessels overall, you can outnumber them. You can over out, you can overwhelm them with numbers really, really easily. This is what I was saying earlier about spamming the hell out of your smaller vessels. They struggle to take down starfighters. They have their own starfighter complements, but they're ain't they're aging vessels. They're mostly V wings and Arc 170s and some LAT gunships. They're really not that good compared to your Tie Fighter wings that you can have in large numbers. And again. When you use your gladiator cruisers, especially that come with both bombers and those starfighters, you pretty much have a very set path to deal with your enemy venators uh, early on. Trust me, I'm not kidding when I say this. Please use your actual small vessels. It really helps a ton. Now the Republic boilers overall are very difficult. I'll try to see if I can get some gameplay in in these uh, in this video, showing me fighting off one of their fleets with an example of the ships that I just got through talking about. Matter of fact, I'll queue a few up right now. We'll try to we'll try to challenge some at Alderaan. It might be a bit of a struggle. Uh, we don't have a whole lot going for us yet because we need to focus on our economic structure. Um, but you know, we'll give it a shot anyway. See how things go. So we're gonna we're gonna queue up a few mining facilities and some planets. And the Empire also starts off with the indoor and model sector. Sectors generate the largest amount of income out of anything in the entire game. I'm not even kidding. They generate a plethora of income. They also start off with Kessel all the way up here. Kessel is a bit of a debatable area to defend. I mean, I'm going to personally build it up with a level three station. I don't think you always need to, but you know, it's worth giving it a shot. Over here, we also start off with this world, Boda Jeff. I mean, you can try to defend this world if you want, but it's ultimately not worth it in my opinion. The Empire does start off with a few outer worlds that are ultimately, you know, you can give these up like it sucks losing planets early game but sometimes you just got to make sacrifices so we'll let these kind of build and as you can see our credits aren't being siphoned horribly yet we're still in the process of uh building a few things but overall our credits aren't just being demolished immediately so i'm going to rotate a few units around we can leave coruscant b coruscant starts off with a tier two station and a goal in two like goal in twos are literally the best one of the best stations in the game you don't need to really worry about it too hard uh, the Empire also starts off with Mara Jade, who is a scouting unit and kind of, can kind of give you an idea of what the other enemy factions have uh, in their orbit. One of the kind of cheesy things you could do as the Empire also is, as you notice, your fleets are a little separated in these areas, uh, unfortunately. But one of the funny things I learned is if you send your fleets to from over here to attack Alderaan, they will always retreat to Kuat if you make them retreat. So that's one of the things I started doing. All right, so as you can see, we're about to run a little low on money. Uh, we're draining our resources a little quickly, and we're probably going to start production on pretty much anything else that isn't super important. We've pretty much only got mining facilities and uh, buildings and stuff under construction. So we'll let it be for now. We'll let some of these finish out. Uh, I think this should be our last one. Okay, so yeah, we don't have a ton of money yet. But we're going to keep moving units around. The Republic will probably start attacking soon. But again, I don't expect them to hit Coruscant. No fleet in this early game can attack Coruscant. It's very well defended and very, very hard to kill. <laughs> so let's see what they got in really early. They got uh, three Venators and a few other units. Yeah, well, that's a pretty tough fleet overall. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep building up our bomber forces. And then we're also going to put into production a taxation agency. Kuat, the Kuat system, being a system, you get pretty much all the value you, you can out of mining facilities and taxation agencies because there are multiple planets within the system. So, you know, do with that as you will. Coruscant is also going to be one of our biggest money makers. So we're going to start production on a commercial trading hub as well. And we're going to let that build up. You don't have to rush. Literally, there is literally zero value in rushing in this. Take your damn time, please. Trust me. So that's going to finish up over here, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and start the upgrade process for this. Our credits are going to drain a little bit, but that's okay. Pay attention to what kind of structures you have building at once. Like, I know for a fact we're going to hit zero before these finish building. But, I mean, I know how fast these structures build off the top of my head, and that's just from my personal experience with it. Um, so, you know, it's okay. That, that's okay. We can let that happen. And we're going to build up a few buildings, let them all finish, uh, move a couple of things around here and there, and just kind of play a more organized so Kuat or Kessel is pretty well defended uh with Kessel being a mining or consisting of a lot of mines and uh asteroids and stuff you can easily slap a mining facility on this planet or on this system rather these smaller GCs definitely are a little harder than your larger ones um purely because it's hard to get income really flowing compared to those bigger galactic conquests but you know you get used to it after a while it just takes a little bit of time this planet is actually really, really tough. Now, if they were to attack 
Coruscant with this fleet combined with this fleet, I could see that being as a potential threat. It, it would definitely be difficult. I won't deny that. But Venators aren't just S tier godships either. I think a lot of people forget that. So we're getting all of our money kind of going. Uh, Kessel is done building mining facilities or building the mining company. You need this in order to build mining facilities. You need the local mining companies. Please read your building descriptions, your unit descriptions. They'll go a long way. Uh, the reason we want to focus super hard on Alderaan is uh, because it cuts off our forces. And Cato Nemoidia is heavily defended, so we don't really want to go there. There is usually a Lucker Hulk in orbit above this planet, if I recall. But as you can see, our income is kind of really starting to build up now. So it just takes a little bit of time. There's chances I'm probably going to get attacked here and there, but, you know, like I said, you just got to kind of take a risk and hope that doesn't happen, I guess. <laughs> the model sector is also heavily defended, too. It has Golans, it has orbital defense lasers, um, you name it. All right, so our credit's going to drop again. All right, so now that we finished building this mining facility, these mining facilities, we could actually start upgrading them, too. Now, I can understand it might not be the most entertaining thing to just have to sit there and play building upgrade simulator, but at the same time, the whole goal of this is to is basically playing like a Stellaris style, civilization style kind of thing. That's really the whole goal. Um, so this is going to finish building, and then we should be getting some pretty good value out of Kuat right now, which we are. We're getting a lot of value out of Kuat. Okay. Excuse my voice crack. I'm going to start production on a lot of gladiators and just let them queue up and do their thing. Uh, this planet's almost done upgrading that structure. So yeah, just gonna, it's going to take a little bit of time. Most of the minor factions, especially in that lower difficulty, just straight up will not attack. They will literally mine their own businesses. They prep their own forces, which is fine. It shouldn't just be immediately everything's going crazy and trying to kill you all at once. Um, things really take time. I can't speak for those higher tier difficulties. Those higher difficulties are legitimately actually kind of nuts. They add so many buffs to the enemy units. Uh, <laughs> I can't blame a lot of people for getting frustrated on some of those uh, higher difficulties. That's for sure. Okay. So we've got a decent little fleet here. A little fleet of uh, seven gladiators, a star destroyer. Star destroyers are also really damn strong. Don't underestimate them. Uh, we're out of credits again, but that's okay. We're almost done building some more of these ships. And I don't think we really have too much else happening. Yeah, pretty much all of our resources are going into what's left of that gladiator. We'll start upgrading our mining facility over here. And then uh, while it does that, I'm going to do what I was talking about earlier. I'm going to launch an attack on Alderaan. And then we're going to retreat. And this should send all of our forces to Kuad. Now, I want to do this battle with a couple of more ships. Because, I mean, I'm not saying just go into battles with small fleets expecting victory. Because that, that's just not how things work either. <laughs> you know, you still need your numbers, that's for sure. Um, oh, I forgot. They have a Republic hero here, too. Okay, that adds a little bit of difficulty to it. That definitely adds a little bit of toughness, but that's okay. We can still make it out. It shouldn't be too bad. She's also a stealth hero, so she can go to any planet she wants, technically. Okay. We're going to signal the retreat, and then we should go to Kuat. And if they attack Brentall, that's fine, because it'll leave their orbit kind of free. It is what it is. I love the taillights on these ships, too. Now, we should go to Kuat. If we don't, I'm actually going to be a little scared. Okay, we went to Kuat. Perfect. Okay, so let's see here. Now, I don't want to want to fight a gladiator versus a venator. It's pretty one-sided. I think the venator should usually win 99% of the time. Um, we're going to start production on vindicators now. These are going to be our ion units, our units that are going to take down the shields of these ships. They definitely consume credits at an alarming rate, but it's okay. Um... And don't, and truly really reminder, there are other planets you can also go to, too. Don't, don't just, like, once you take care of the Republic Loyalists in this region, um, <coughs> once you take care of them in this region, I mean, you can largely move on to the upper northern quadrant of the galaxy. That's what I would do, anyway. So we got a, we got a Vindicator built. Let's get a couple other things in production. Uh, Kessel, we could continue to put more buildings here, I guess. We can actually upgrade our mining facilities to tier twos. Same with these. Yeah, I'm actually just siphoning our credits right now. This is a, this is an example of what not to do. <laughs> We're actually going to stop construction on that vindicator for a hot second. <laughs> like I said, this is a prime example of what not to do. Don't just build everything all at once. It'll it'll bite you in the ass, man. I'm not kidding. Now this is a temperate climate planet, so we're gonna. I guess it doesn't really matter what we do with this one. 
We'll slap an administrative facility above it. That's about as far as we'll get with that, probably. Okay. So yeah, your first couple of weeks are really going to truly be boring. Like with any Civ simulator, they're going to be boring. They're definitely going to be a lot more un uninteresting. Not a lot's going to happen. Uh, but that's just the reality of actually building a true, you know, empire, I guess, so to speak. As you can see, Castle is pumping out money for us right now. 2K. Enemy fleet approaching. Oh, they're actually doing it. Oh, that's from Rendili. Ooh, okay. Well, we could hit them. We could hit them as equally as hard. All right, ignore me saying nobody ever attacks Corsair. <laughs> okay, they actually completely ignored Alderaan or left Alderaan. Holy shit! Wow. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. We might actually be a little fucked here. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of ships. I gotta admit, that's the first time I've ever seen that. I actually don't know how they managed to get all those units together. Yeah, how did they get all those units together? Well, the Empire AI, the Empire War AI cheats. They send multiple units to attack it on an attack vector at once to one location. Um, they will just straight up... The Empire War AI cheats. <laughs> They'll all just get there automatically. It's kind of bullshit. Okay. We, got a communication we can still do this, though, I believe. The only thing that's going to be tough is uh, that vin that um, that secular, but the secular also takes up a lot of population points too. So, and the AI isn't smart enough to put them not with the rest of their fleet. <laughs> like it, it, we we got this. Okay, I'm gonna group with some bombers. Yeah, I gotta admit, even I'm a little mind blown by the size of the fleet. Okay, it looks like they're going towards the station itself and ignoring the golems for the most part. But that's okay. Okay, there's the victory cruiser. We can honestly broadside this fleet with our fighters right now. Do not underestimate Golans. They have extreme range. Okay. So they only have the one victory. A lot of starfighter stuff from the secular. That's okay. Let's hit that uh, proton torpedo launcher on this. There we go. Put some jamming pods up. These jamming pods will prevent their missiles from hitting us super hard. Okay, we're gonna leave the bombers over here to do their thing a little bit. We're gonna keep the starfighters super close. I'm expecting their fighters to potentially push us, but they definitely wanna take out the missile launchers on this. So that victory's large. That victory is largely minuscule now. We can kind of ignore it. Okay, here come their starfighters. Okay. All right, so the bombers can kind of come over here now. The Golan should largely finish these guys off. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to let our fighters kind of do their thing over there. Yeah, the Golan should be able to manhandle pretty much anything that comes its way. Okay. Okay, where are uh, Gonzadis? Gonzadis take their damn time to get over here, man. We're gonna make these group four. Low power to engines. Yeah, we'll let our fighters do the thing over here. Um. Yeah, Golden Twos are not bitchamate. These things are strong. As you can see, it's literally um, annihilating this Venator right now. And for the hangar bay on that. Uh, we're going to just continue to take out the shield generators on these units. Our ties and stuff are manhandling most of the Republic fighters. And while we might be losing a lot of money out of this, that's okay as long as we preserve Coruscant. That's all that truly matters. Okay. Yeah, that thing's shield generator is gone now. Now we'll focus on their ca on their their fleet commander. Yeah, but then this should be able to pretty much decimate anything that comes its way. As in, they haven't even put a dent in our shield generator yet. Or shields, rather. We don't have shield generators. Uh, the tie. What are these called? I forgot what this unit is called because its text is so damn big. <laughs> um, armor piercing, good versus damage resistance. Do not penetrate shields. Okay, so these do not penetrate shields. None of its missiles do. That's okay. We're gonna switch them to this for a hot second. 
Okay. We're launching more support craft too. Okay, her shields are gone. We can largely ignore her now. Station can focus her down, honestly. Okay, so far so good. I cannot deny, I was a little shocked when I saw that big ass fleet. It definitely threw me for a loop for a hot second. Okay. We need uh, We need our Gazadis over here for one. To assault these ships with. Put some healing fields down. Uh, Thai interceptors, you're gonna come up here and help defend. Ties can continue to take care of what's left over here. There we go. It's a little hard to see the Republic icons, unfortunately, but that's okay. Looks like the hero unit is also gone as well. Okay, shields are starting to wane a little bit on this. Aim for that shield generator. Take it out. There we go. Okay, Titan Interceptors have arrived to deal with the V-Wings. Looks like they're sending in reinforcements, acclimators, the like. The one key thing about Golems is they don't have shield generators. So they are uh, very, very strong. Actually, I might, I'm gonna send these in with the bombers over here, with the TIE Interceptors too. Uh, we could probably use them over there. Let's see what other bombers we've got left over. Yeah, we're pretty good to go over here. Let's see, their fleet commander is completely gone. Actually, let's finish off the um, these guys. Okay. Okay, let's take care of these starfighters behind us. We can actually, we can truly dedicate our, our bombers and stuff to the fighters right now. They have some anti-starfighter stuff. Okay. I don't know what just exploded over here, but it sure as hell is dead. So they're starting to weaken our Golan a little bit, but you can see what it's costing just to take out one Golan. Dreadnought cruiser destroyed. Put out more healing fields if we can. I don't know where that Gonzati group is. All right, so we've lost the shields in this station. That's okay. Where are the others? Orders, sir. Another vet another set of venators. I think that's like two. Think of the shield generator on this. Even with the shields gone, the Golan's armor is ridiculously strong. Okay, we're gonna target the shield generators on this really quick. Okay. All Starfighters should be set to hunt. Okay. All Bombers, focus your fire on uh, the Venator. Unfortunately, it's, it's pretty much out of combat for the rest of our units. Gonzadis, unfortunately, also are a little bit of a uh, tissue paper. <laughs> it is what it is, though. Okay. Shields are gone on this Venator. We can truly start focusing our fire on it with our Gola. Actually, no, let's take up this. Get rid of the missile launchers on this that are really doing them a lot more damage. Looks like they called in another Venator, too. Okay, let's annihilate this Venator. Lots of enemy fighters around here, man. Okay, <laughs> once the second it breaks through, this this golden actually might be able to hit it. Hey, they're retreating. Let's keep damaging this uh this vendor. Unfortunately, there's no real way to stop these units from retreating. It is what it is. Okay, you should be good. Yeah, they, uh, these some of these units could could use a engine hard point. I personally think. 
a few of them maybe because it's a little too difficult to kind of stop them from retreating but at the same time we fended off that fleet with uh no real damage to our own forces only thing that suffered is our economy <laughs> that's okay but yeah Coruscant is capable of defending itself even against large formations you just have to use all the units that you are given which is which are a lot you are giving a lot with that planet so we're gonna start moving our forces over here for our land invasion of uh, Alderaan. It's looking like it's a pretty heavily fortified planet too. Uh, yeah, we cut them down a little bit. Probably gonna move around, go to go to uh, Corellia. You know. <clears throat> so yeah, some of the forces have divided up and moved on, which is great. This is, like I said, this gives us the opportunity to attack this planet. On paper, we should be able to take up this number of regiments. We probably might take a few losses though. Uh, let's see. Do we have anywhere we could build up more? We do not. We actually don't have a single light factory anywhere. I just realized. Okay. Enemy fleet approaching. Lorinar. Ah, we're gonna probably lose this planet. That's okay. I'm gonna sell all the stuff here. Enemy fleet approaching. Yeah, we're definitely gonna lose this planet. They ain't messing around, man. Oh, by the Mandalorians. That's different. Yeah, you can just go ahead, man. I don't really care about it. That's okay. That's actually good, because the Mandalorians can give a bit of a threat to the Republic, which is what we need right now. Just gotta keep them off our heel. I think we should be able to take this planet. I don't really have much here. Um, let me check on the other planets really quick. So yeah, we're, we're pretty much finished upgrading over here. Pretty much finished upgrading over here. So yeah, I'm not kidding though when I say focus on that economy and these smaller ships because I mean we took a big we, we just lost a planet. We're still at 90 or 9k credits. Yeah, it's it's very beneficial. I should probably start building up Brent Hall too. I didn't even have one of my planets built up, but we're still holding out just fine. Um Let's see what we got here. What else do we need? We can use some admin buildings here and some commercial trading hubs. So yeah, you know, we're surrounded by a lot of mini planets, so we don't really have we don't have any reason to rush into hardcore military production. Take your time. <clears throat> All right, so hopefully this video will help you out a little bit. It's just kind of my way of giving you guys like a bit of a starter. I know my wordplay and usage is kind of all over the place. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me because I have a I have a cut in my mouth and I have a cyst on my neck that makes just doing anything painful right now. Ah, uh, this map. Now, the one thing about this map is <clears throat> it truly kind of is, it's a little broken. It's very zoomed in and the devs are aware of this. But um, for your early formations with the infantry units, my favorite thing to do is to group like the art, the tanks and stuff is like group five. Everything else, uh, the troop, the troop carriers are debatable. What we're going to do is though, we're going to garrison all of our troops, which will be group two into these uh, transports. Now, one key thing to note, they all have sergeant teams. Every regiment has sergeant teams. They give a combat bonus to your infantry, but if they die, it sends your units into a disarray, which stuns yeah. them temporarily. Originally, it was a mechanic I was not fond of, but once I kind of learned how to really play around things appropriately, it got a lot easier. So, um, I believe bombardments in this update also cost some money. Now. I think it's like 2,000 for, a, for a, a bombardment. I don't know if that's in my version or not, but it should be. Okay. Um, we'll make these guys all group three for now. <clears throat> and then these, we'll just temporarily lay them as group four. We're going to move right here because there is, in fact, a turbo laser tower on this map right here, like right around here. So group five will actually be our group one for now. But here's how we're going to approach this. We're going to stay around here, right around here. You guys are going to pull back a little bit. Then we're going to deploy all our, our forces. So, one of the things I like to do personally uh, is keep the sergeants kind of away from the battle. If we have to, if we can anyway. So, we're getting attacked a little bit here. Take out those troops. Keep your tanks at range. They have a lot of range. You don't need to have your tank. You shouldn't have your tanks on the front. Line. Okay. So, our sergeant teams uh, are a little hard to identify on the ground. But you can identify them by these little arrow looking icons it's a little hard to see but it takes a little bit of time to get used to um currently there's no real way to really make that any better so to speak so this map again also just is not it's a little bugged and like i said the devs are a little are aware of it so 
You want to set your infantry in feet first. You want to set these guys in first. Your tanks have range. Um, the turbo laser towers will usually target those tanks. Now, imagine we're only starting off with one regiment right here. I just realized I just grouped them by accident. Just group uh, one. Oops. Okay. So yeah, keep use your infantry to distract these guys, basically these turrets. Although I'm actually getting a little too close because they're starting to target our tanks. So this is the mistake number. This is mistake number one that I'm making right here. Okay. Yeah, we lost the tank because I got careless. There we go. So yeah, you want your you want your infantry on the front, on the front lines especially. Okay. So we're gonna try to outrange your TX-130s. Let's go! Open fire! Yeah, we're we're getting a little too frantic here. We're we're a little too close for my personal comfort anyway. What are your orders? We can usually outrange these guys, so. All right, yeah, now, now we're starting to get a little wiped here. We're going to have all of our infantry retreat into their uh, transports temporarily. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly how we're going to go about this. We're going to pull back a little bit, call more reinforcements, which is what we haven't done yet. <laughs> we're calling our medium walker regiment that has stormtroopers. So his bombing runs can be used right out the gate. Bombing runs could also be used right out the gate, pretty much. They recharge every 30 seconds. Very powerful. Okay, let's go this way. Pull back a little bit. Okay, let's, let's, yeah, let's retreat a little bit, you know? Get out of the battle. That's okay. I'm gonna put a, uh... I'm gonna put a back facility here. Keep all of our officers and stuff alive. Let's get over here really quick. Get healed up. We should, yeah. So we've got our other regiments down here now. Uh, we're gonna keep all of our walkers at group one. Get all of our infantry healed up. Okay, you pull back over here. You go like right here. You gotta be. You definitely have to be tactical with things though. Like that's. It's no joke. It's truly no joke. All right, so we're gonna move uh, all these little transports out the way because they're kind of in the way right now. Okay. And then instead of grouping this with our group two, which is what our original regiment is, we're gonna make this group three, make it its own little uh, group. We're gonna keep the tank busters with the other team though. Um, actually, how do we want to go about this? I'm gonna take all of our little officer guys, keep them kind of in the same group. We'll keep them all in the same group. We'll make our tank busters uh, group four, I guess. Weapons ready. Yeah, that's how we do it. All right. So, all right, let's move. So group two will be on the right on the left flank over here. Group three will be on our right. We're just kind of position ourselves here because our goal is to take this landing zone over here. It's gonna be a push, but that's okay. It's gonna be a little bit of uh, work. Now, you won't lose full regiments until after, like, more than two-thirds of your vehicles are gone, so keep your transports especially out of battle, because they count. Uh, you don't want to lose them. So, yeah. Group 2 will be over here, or Group 3 will be over here. Group 2 is going to be over here. Group 5, which is our field commanders. I'm going to keep them in their own little specialized group. My keyboard sucks, so I might hit the wrong keys very often, and I apologize for that. We're going to start moving up. Let's see. I like kind of keeping these guys in their own specialized group sometimes so the walkers can freely move forward. Uh, group two, move out, or stay over here a little bit. Group three, keep things separate, you know? Actually, group two, you're going to take this landing zone. Leg it. Okay, group three, you're going to move up. That's it, keep it pushing. They'll be okay. Okay. 
All right, we can probably start moving some of our other guys up too. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we'll keep them with group three. We'll keep our rocket boys with group three just to make it a little less chaotic. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I just sacrifice these guys. That's tough. We should probably get them help them. Yeah, we kind of we kind of just sacrificed the lives of all those poor soldiers. That's unfortunate. All right, whatever. They'll be okay. Group three, let's move forward. Group one. Hit those tanks. There we go. We're taking we're taking some losses though. That's a lot of tanks. God damn. But yeah, we're wiping them out pretty quickly though. Okay. This new group three is our new group two since group two got wiped out, literally. Okay, let's not get our tanks on the front lines. Ah, juggernauts. Nice. Okay, maintain our distance. Okay, what we're gonna do is, um. I'm gonna move this E web trooper up here. I'm gonna move him, like, right here. I don't usually micro E web troopers, I just kind of stick them somewhere. Uh, we're going to put our field commanders in the back. Uh, we're going to get more of our tanks up here to help out. Like right around here, maybe. I don't know. What are your orders? And then uh, group two will just stay up front for the time being. Yeah, let's go. Ready to pick up soldier, sir. Open. Let's make these uh, temporarily... Ready what do we have? Group six? We have group six, right? Yeah. Ready for order. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Turn around. Turn around, turn around. Don't want them going too far ahead now. But yeah, as you can see, we took out pretty much everything that they had to offer <laughs> with really no true difficulty. Awaiting orders, Commander. So we're gonna uh, withdraw Group Two for now. Get them back over here at this back to station. It's a little fugazi to try to keep all your officers separated and stuff. So sometimes it, you, you can throw them into the fray. Just be aware that they can die and cause you some problems, but it's a little hard to keep track of them all the time. We do need um, we do need repair facilities kind of right now. We also need uh, what do we need? What else do we need? I don't really know. All right, so our new newly formed group three will be all the way over here. The rest of our tanks are reporting in. Now some teams do have engineers, like they do have repair troopers. Um, it's just a matter of you know what they look like. They have icons on their feet to kind of point them out, but... See, so yeah, we're gonna get group two all healed up. Get them all nice and fixed up. These guys are gonna move up. We're gonna fast forward this too, because we've been here for a while now. Land battles are long if there's enough units, man. You just gotta prepare. You don't have to do as nearly as much microing as I do, obviously. Um, but if you want the best results, you gotta play smart. File in troops. Actually, no, you guys get on the front. <clears throat> okay. And again, I don't really want my field commanders in the front, so let me see. Where are they? I'll keep them all back here. I think group two should be good to go. All right, so you guys form up right here. You group two form up over here. Tanks, you kind of just make some kind of nutty formation in the middle. All right, actually, this is a bad idea. You don't want to group your tanks up this hard. <laughs> All right, let's push their base. Let's start making some moves. Infantry go that way. Okay. You guys move right here. So, yeah, you want your troopers kind of, like I said, feet first. Like, you want them in. It's a little hard to see on this map, though, because of how weird it is. And again, the devs are fully aware of this. Won't say like this permanently. Oh, that's a perfect uh, spot to put a repair uh, station. Alright. We're actually going to withdraw our walkers. Have them come back over here. Okay, let's keep everybody separate. We're going to keep, we're going to get our walkers fixed up first. Uh, they're all looking a little beat up. <laughs> And then we've got these large we've got these large groups of tanks right here down the middle, so that's that's a plus. Ready, 
I'm gonna make these guys group four for now so that we can continue our objectives here. Okay. Now tanks you still sometimes want to keep spread out too. Um, damn, we have all our field commanders over here. Okay, let's get into the fray. Yep, we can just annihilate them in range. Put them all in their defensive ability and guard this position. Now they're still gonna, the turbo lasers just can still target our tanks if they want to, uh, but you know. What's funny is the, the turbo laser isn't even hitting our infantry right here. There we go. Okay, group two, you can move on up. All right, these guys are good enough. Let's take out these air support towers too, which can kind of mess with our bombing runs. The main enemy base is actually over here. I'm gonna go send our walkers to destroy this. Actually, no, there are there are turbo lasers in route. Never mind. Actually, yeah, we're gonna go destroy the main enemy base. Screw this area. All that's over there is the planetary shield, um, which I can send Group Two to go take out. It should be okay. Okay, there we go. I drew that tank out, which is good. We're gonna send our tanks over here really quick. Have them take care of this damn power generator. I wanted to make sure the infantry were over here first. Okay, they can do their thing over there. Uh, walkers, you keep over here. Let's keep it pushing, men. Like I said, this is a little overdone, and it's a little hard on this map because of the like the zoom in, unfortunately. Um, key thing to note: power generators do not shut off turbo laser towers. It weakens or damage significantly, but they're all still independently powered. So group three is over here. Group two, let's move on up. But everybody should be in route over here. The power generator is somewhere over here, or it's on this mountain right here, this little thing. I don't really know exactly where it is. But it's not victory relevant, so don't worry about it. And we're... There we go. Okay, let's move forward. Let's get it going. We should be approaching the base. And there it is. That should take it out, so... Yeah, you destroy their... If you destroy their regiments and then destroy their base, you pretty much win. <laughs> so that battle was a little long, and I probably did a little too much, but it, 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 I have to for that map is, is specific. It's uh, very hard to see. Okay. <clears throat> so the Mandalorians are now on their doorstep, which is phenomenal. And we can pretty much focus all of our resources over here. So, get rid of Alderaan first as soon as possible. Whether you auto-resolve the battle on land or not. You get rid of that planet. You eliminate pretty much your most potent threat, which is the Republic early. Because they, they're they no longer in the core with you. Like that. And now we're just going to kind of focus on our economy a little bit and build up more. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't know what the rest of the factions are really doing. The Criminal Underworld is kind of doing its own thing. Criminal Underworld by far is the easiest faction to play as. They are completely isolated from most major threats. They have a few minor factions around them. I would say the Rebellion is next. Not as isolated, but still isolated. Empire is the hardest because they control most of the major worlds in the center of the galaxy. That's just how it makes sense. It makes sense, truly. Um, we're gonna eventually start going towards our tech level two upgrades, uh, but we'll probably continue that in our main Let's Play. Uh, this is mostly just meant to be a tutorial video kind of to get things going. Uh, we can't really get too much money out of this planet with this, so we're going to put this here and uh, make that our main source of income. We have a light factory over here. Uh, we're going to want to build the Imperial Barracks, which decreases the price overall of uh, all of our regiments. And then we're going to put an advanced factory here, or a heavy factory, or whatever you want to call it. That'll get us our heavy units, our AT-ATs, and so forth and so forth. Brent's Hall is still being ferociously neglected. Um, you only really need one major base right off the rip. You don't need multiple heavy bases. And it looks like the Republic Hardline has also just took Bestine, so that means Fondor is a bit under potential threat. Uh, it's not as heavily defended either. So we're going to focus on building up some ships for this planet. We should still be able to save it, realistically speaking. Ah, but the Republic also has slightly abandoned Rindili, which is great. Looks like the Hapes Consortium is also on the move a little bit too. 
I gotta be prepared for that. Let's see. We'll actually sacrifice construction over here for more over here. Um, oh, Kessel. Oh, wow. I forgot to build this planet up like I said I was going to. That is actually a problem. We have a tier 3 station. I don't know what they could potentially have right off the rip. It's going to be the Hut Forces. Oh, yeah, we should be able to win this. I think. They don't have too many heavy vessels. They have a lot of Starfighter stuff. These crate gunships are insanely strong. Uh... Yeah, it's going to be tough. This is going to be a tough one. Hunt ships have their weaknesses for sure, but we don't have the ultra-powerful defensive like a Golan 2, so if we lose Kessel, that's going to hurt us, but it won't be the death of our empire either. We'll lose our biggest money-making resource. That's about it, though. <clears throat> and then we can also use these upgrades. This station, These stations over here are not supposed to be, I think, this far away from the rest of the combat. <laughs> but uh, we're going to give it our best. Those crate gunships are going to be the difficult thing to kill. we got to use them everything kind of in combination with our fighters and invest our money. Uh, let's see. We'll build... What is this? Scouting satellites. Defensive support. Uh, hmm. We'll try the laser defensive satellites. I don't really know how effective they are. Okay, this is going to be tough. But we could definitely keep buffing up our stations, weapons, and defenses. Like, so this is going to be a bit of a grueler. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Yep, here they come. I'm send my bombers after this first. I'm gonna have the stations focus on the crates, honestly. Yeah, we, do, we already eliminated one of their fighters. Or one of their um, smaller frigates. We can actually chase these crate gunships down. We have the numbers to out outgun them. Okay. So that station's already lost all of it. Or this ship's already lost all of its shields. They're flanking us, too. Why does everything feel so zoomed in? I mean, we can obviously just rotate the can or the, the camera, almost like the cannon. We can rotate the camera, but everything feels super zoomed in for some reason. I don't know why. Let's aim for the hangar bay on this. Right, we're going to lose money as we try to kill everything. That's okay. It's bound to happen. Take the engines on this. Or, no, 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 no. This. Okay. Right, we've got more bombers out. <clears throat> And they barely put a dent into our station, honestly. So upgrading it was the right call. I second these starfighters that are coming in. Okay. Let's take out those engines. Those beautiful, beautiful engine hard points that I love so much. We're going to send our bombers after this. It's kind of isolated. We'll aim for the hangar bay first, so in case it launches any fighters. Uh, we don't really have to worry about it. <clears throat> There we go. And yeah, most of their fleets are already on fire. <laughs> glorious, glorious, glorious fire. Yeah, hangar bays are gone on that. We'll aim for the, uh, the, 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 the engines next. Okay. Can I put the healing field down, please? Those crate gunships do are very difficult to kill, though. For our starfighters, unfortunately. Take the engines in this. If at the most we might be able to force them into a retreat, which is one one of our main goals. Yeah, take the engines on that. Okay. We're gonna group all of our fighters up, including the bombers, and aim for these crate gunships so our bombers can shoot torpedoes at them. Hopefully. Where the hell are where the hell are our Gonzadis? What are you guys doing? What are you doing, man? Oh, let's aim for his engines also. Make sure he does not get out of here. 
in one piece. We've lost all our money, unfortunately. It is what it is, though. Our shield's draining really quick, actually. But that's because of the iron cannons on this. Okay, aim for those iron cannons, take them all out. Hit those engines. Aim for the iron cannons on this. And we've lost our shields, but the, these stations are very tough. There we go. And the, the engines are gone with that too, so it's just about cleanup now. Let's finish off their leftovers like it's Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, you don't want to mess around with level 3 colonies, man. They're tough. Get some cool screenshots. <laughs> I thought we took the engines out on that. I don't know. We lost our satellite grid, though. Which sucks, but... It didn't really do much to begin with. So... Fended off another major, major, major enemy attack. We lost a lot of money in the process. Which is bound to happen. That's just one of the unfortunate parts of, uh... A system like this, um, but really nothing you can do about it, so you gotta just deal with it. Let's see. But especially, we really truly want to keep uh, keep Kessel alive. With the raw amount of money we're making from that planet alone, uh, yeah, it's a very important planet to keep alive. Let's move the Imperial fleet off of here and send them straight to Rindili to deal with the Republic Hardliner forces here. Looks like they might have brought more forces in from their other systems, baby. We'll see you in a second. <clears throat> Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, they've got four Venator classes. Their station is in the middle. Their stations are relatively weak, though, so we don't really have to worry about too much. Uh, we're going to use Vader as a scout. I'm not going to do the land battle on Rindili. Uh, it has the exact same map as Alderaan. And again, we just Let's saw how that went. Now we, can move these, we can bring Vader back a bit. Let's get this gladiator moving. So yeah, call in all of our gladiators. All of them. Helmsman, take us out. Now. Proceeding to that location. We're also going to talk, call in our boy Tarkin, because he's got a healing field ability. Yeah, he's in a modular task force fate. cruiser. Um, they're definitely going to have more fighters than us. So we're definitely going to bring in our Tartans. I don't know how good the Vigils are. Out. We'll see. They're definitely going to have more fighters than us, though. But we also have Vader, so... Alright. Only only two... Only three of the Venators over here. One is all the way off in the... Up here, just doing his own thing. I don't know what he's doing. Okay, let's go. We got a communication from Imperial Command. What is it? Let's break off to the Imperial left and to the right with our fighter groups. Gladiator cruiser reporting. The enemy is approaching. Okay. Yep, here they come. Oh, they have a victory now too. Holy cow. Gladiator here. What do you need? Okay, hold the position. Except you, you vigil corvette. All these units, um, let's move up a little bit, actually. Let's, get this let's move some of these units We're forward. All these units have long-range turbolasers. Let's activate them. Put them to use. Yes, Throw out these healing fields also. The Vindicator should move back a bit. It's a little too close. Now we're going to take losses. But again, you just got to accept that. This is how it is sometimes. Okay. We're also going to focus down our fire on some of these starfighters too. Actually, screw that. We're going to focus on the Venator, on the victory class over here. And if we do lose this battle, it's okay. Yeah, we're actually playing a little recklessly here. Yeah, they got a lot of shit, actually. This is just careless play on my part. They have a lot of shit. And we truly do not have ample reinforcements to back them up, but that's okay. Ain't taking your distance a little bit, guys. Cover me if you can. Our iron cannons are down. Beginning my firing run. Okay. We've lost six. Get on the fire. Star destroyer. They're hitting us. 
That is honestly not a good idea. Right? We could retreat now. Maybe we even lost Vader. Oof. They were heavily outnumbered and outgunned right here. That's okay though. Now the question is, do I fully retreat? We got the shields down on Warren. But they've got us outnumbered in the fighter category. I think we're going to call it a retreat here. Okay. Unfortunately, we cannot select these units because otherwise I would throw out their healing field. Some things are probably going to die as we retreat, but that's okay. Yeah, we just didn't come into this prepared. Uh, I'm hoping this Vindicator holds out just a little bit longer. Now the Vindicator's toast. That's okay. We're going to take a few losses. We're not prepared for this battle appropriately. At least with the ships that die, we get a little bit of a refund on them, so... It is what it is. They had us outmatched. They had us with heavier weaponry and longer range. We had the numbers, but we just didn't play smart. We should have brought more numbers. I'm truly going to leave Coruscant undefended at this rate. <laughs> Yeah, like, if they truly think they could win like this, I mean, I'm okay with it. So maybe we'll focus our resources elsewhere, like we'll bring gear, maybe Biss. Uh, let's see, where's Mara? Mara, whatever you want to call her. Mara Jade uh, Skywalker, eventually. So we took some losses, but that's okay. Bound to happen. <clears throat> it's all a part of the process. Now, for a fleet like that, we might actually need a little bit big of a big set of bigger vessels. We'll take our time. We're gonna put a tier three station on a Fondor, get that going. I can fend off one of these major fleets right here. Um, let's see. This doesn't look like it has much. Five indicators, two venators. Uh, almost said Valorant. Don't know where I would have got that from. I don't even play Valorant. I don't even like that game really. This is one of those situations where now I cannot blame you if you want to start investing into heavier capital ships, but we have the resources to actually do that. That's what makes the difference between my playthrough and probably a lot of other people's playthroughs. I have the resources to kind of expend on these large vessels. Oh, they took Yagdol too. Oof. Yeah, we're in a pickle over here. Uh, let's see. Golands are very expensive, so that's why I'm not investing in them just yet. Uh, but we definitely do need at least one additional heavy capital ship, I think, for this force. And we'll help it out a lot. Awesome. So we also just finished building up our uh, advanced factory, which gives us access to artillery regiments, which are very stupid good. I'm the reason they got nerfed. Because I bitched about them a lot. <laughs> if we lose Thyphara, we don't really lose much out of it. I'd rather hold Fondor than Thyphara. It is what it is. Uh, we can truly start moving up north also. Might take Bill Brinky, but I mean, at the rate... Oh, we, I just realized. We lost, do we have... Do we only have a Tier 2 when we defended this planet? Or do we have a Tier 3? We had a Tier 2, right? Yeah, so I mean, you can still defend with Tier 2s. Especially since a lot of these planets start off with Golans. Like, they're damn good structures for a reason. Castle is the one planet I'm debating on putting a Golan above, because... Uh, we only have access to the Golan ones right now, on it? Hmm... The model sector could use a few more structures with all the economic power it has. Oh, we'll upgrade this. A lot of money is going to go to that. And they're going to build an artillery regiment. These things are stupid. Like, in a good way. Yeah, as a matter of fact, let's take some time off, or some pain off of our shoulders here. See what they got to build Bringy. Might be able to take it. It's a free planet with literally no ground, uh, basically, and the ability to produce some hardcore shipyards. Um, and asteroid belts as well, or um, asteroid mining facilities, like orbital mining facilities. Okay, I don't need to focus on defending Alderaan too hard yet. We'll focus on uh, our defenses at uh, Fondor for the time being. Got plenty of units over here too. Oof, the Bringy's actually kind of eh, that 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 that's an easy, that's an easily killable fleet. That shouldn't take too much uh, too much effort. We're going to supply some more gladiators to our main force also. And uh, we're probably actually going to just stop the recording here. 
Uh, I'm going to be doing maybe two separate Imperial playthroughs. This is going to be more of a practice, get a feel kind of how to play the Empire kind of thing. Um, and then we'll have a main Let's Play. So thank you for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like on it and sub to the channel for more Star Wars and other gaming content. And as always, I will see you in the next one. And the first will be with you all. Peace.